Hey guys, Sleet here again with another video. Let's talk about counting cards. How is the deck composed? So deck is composed of 24 cards. So where do we get the 24 cards from? You see that each axis obviously has four different moves corresponding to body parts that are not the eyes and ears, but essentially the mouth, the back, the tail, and the horn. Now your deck is composed of two copies of each part on each axis. So each axis has four parts, obviously, um, total of 12 parts, and then two copies of each. Now, when can you actually redraw a card? So say I played Sirius on turn one, when's the next time I can get another Sirius? Or when can I get my third Sirius? You can only redraw a card when you cycle through the rest of your deck. Let's put that in terms of math. You start with 24 cards, and in your opening hand, you draw six, yeah? So that means that there's 18 cards left in your deck, and you draw three cards per turn, meaning that it takes at least six turns, or six more rounds after rounds one, in order for you to draw your entire deck, provided that no axes die. What that equates to is that your deck resets around round seven. Now, that's not always the case, because usually by round seven, your tank is dead, right? So, I would say in an average game, your frontliner gets to play about three cards. Now, what does this also mean? That means that the, either the rest of the cards are in the deck or in your hand. Most of the time, they're going to be in your deck. So if your frontliner dies and you play three cards, essentially there are five other cards in the deck that get removed out of the, the deck pool. Meaning that essentially your deck actually resets more around round five or round six, not so much at round seven anymore. Now how does that come into play? I, I picked this particular match because it showcases essentially uh, counting cards at its finest. So in this particular matchup, it's Bird Beast Plant. This is essentially a beast for all intents and purposes. Bird Beast Plant against Double Aqua. Now this matchup is notoriously difficult for the bird player, mostly because the aqua player outspeed potential, which now outspeeds the bird. Now let's take a look at the flow of the game. So. The early game, nothing really special happens. Okay, now this turn is a crucial turn right here. So on round three, he plays a Koi here, right? So this, I believe, is actually a mistake on the double Aqua player to try to kill the plant with it, but it didn't look like he drew any other cards that allowed him to kill my plant in the front. He could have passed another turn but he wanted to kill it this round. Now why this is important is that if he played a Koi now, we know that it's round three, his deck has not reset yet, meaning that he only has one more Koi opportunity in order for uh, him to outspeed my bird. So, why is this Koi that he played a very important? Let's just take a look at what happens after. So at this point here, usually what the Aqua player wants to do is that they want to trade mids at the same time their mid dies so that you can draw cards purely on the backliner. Now, why that is important is that because this guy is faster than my bird with one Koi, if the midliners die at the same time, my bird is more fragile than the Aqua, leading that the Aqua will go first and outspeed and kill my bird. Um, the next few turns doesn't really matter too much. He does tries to deal a little bit of damage to my midliner set, but kill. I kill his plant here. Now, this is the next part of the mind game. So, what does he think I'm going to do here? Because in most opportunities, your bird is faster. He doesn't have the speed up right now. I will probably trade into this while he can trade into my guy. Now, I saw that he played a Koi earlier, meaning that he does not draw redraw the Koi yet. It's round five. So, I decide to pass on this turn because he's scared about playing cards on his midliner. So he ha is forced to really play cards on this guy so he won't lose a bunch of energy on his frontliner. So I decide to pass this turn, which essentially forces him to use his other Koi. I split his draws again. So he's probably going to be drawing on the frontliner at this point. And at this point, I can decide to kill this the only risky part is if he drew more on the backliner. But we already saw that he played three cards a previous turn, two cards on my tank, meaning that the maximum cards that he can draw on his backliner is three, but it most likely won't be all damage because he only played one Bidens. So at this point, 
he no longer has the ability to actually kill me. So he actually drew all eight cards on his backliner from his deck. His deck has not reset yet. And if we just speed this up a little bit, we can see that at this point, he's no longer able to outspeed me. And now the deck finally resets and he drew his Koi. So this is essentially a prime example of where counting cards can win you the game through sometimes passing. You know? And seeing how they... Uh, seeing how they're going to use their cards. So it's because of the round three play, they're able to make this decision. The next thing we should talk about is the card counters. So uh, let's also explain the in-game card counters, shall we? Okay, so we, we finally got a team, yeah? So in this particular one, we see that the card counters that we should be focused on is the top right and the bottom left. The top right always starts out at zero. I don't know why, but while we're not playing cards, this is representing the amount of cards that they held in their hand. So it's saying in the previous turn. So it's saying that in the previous turn, they had zero cards. Obviously, the game hasn't started yet, right? Now, also our deck starts out with 24 cards on the bottom. Now, next turn, we'll see that this counter will update to 6, and this counter will update to 18, because that was the previous round. We drew 6 cards this round, yeah? Um, let me just play a couple cards. Um, but we'll see that this number, while cards are being played, so if I end turns and cards are being played, this number will then update to the current amount of cards that will hold in their hand. If they pass, it'll look like six. So they passed, notice that the card counter updates to six. This means that they're holding six cards right now. Yeah. Now that also is very important because that essentially tells you how many cards they have in their hand at all times. We know that you draw three cards per turn which means that this t turn, they actually have nine cards, yeah? And notice that this updates to 18, meaning that this is the amount of cards in your deck the previous turn. Now, if I play, again, I just play cards. I'm not gonna do too much. I'll just play the cards like so. If he plays cards, this number will update instead of nine to be whatever it is. So let's take a look. What does he do? Does he play cards or not? So he didn't play cards. Now notice this actually went down to seven. That means that the two of the cards actually belong to this guy right here. So this guy actually had two cards right here. He has seven cards split between the two axes like so. Yeah, and that's actually pretty important to know. And notice again, I drew three more cards on the previous turn, meaning that there's 15 cards left in my deck. Um, so this turn, he has 10 cards split between these two. And just knowing that and knowing their energy, you can kind of figure out what they have to do with that. Um, unfortunately here, I think I'm kind of boned because I didn't draw a bird card, so kind of sucks. This guy's gonna heal a bunch. Unfortunately, I can't really play on that, so. Now his card counter will drop to three, and this will also account for any cards that they've drawn at all, all points. So we know that the next turn he has six cards in hand. Um, and knowing the spread of cards, he played four cards on the front liner and then three cards on the back liner. So that also gives you a spread on like what kind of cards they might have in their hand. It's more likely that they have, well, actually no, they played four on both. So it's like an even spread, we don't really know. Um, but yeah, I probably lost this game, but I'm just explaining again what the card counters mean um, When they update and whatnot. So yeah So again, remember that during the turn he had three cards. So he has six cards this turn He's probably gonna play some cards here and we'll see the updated counter while we're during the waiting period This will now update to six after it's over. So you see six now here. Yeah um Unfortunately, I don't kill this guy. Oh no, he last stands. Actually, that's great. So, he's probably gunning for my backliner, I would imagine. So, it, since it didn't die, he still holds onto his cards. But if this died, this uh, counter would update to reflect what actually is the number of cards he had. And now he's on four cards. You see, so like a lot of the cards were on this guy and they got discarded. But yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you can see he has seven cards on his bird. And it's just up to him whether he wants to go front or back or not. So he redraws, so you can see now it looks like six. That's fine.
Unfortunately, I didn't get a hero, so I'll probably lose this one. Oh, I crit. I got really lucky there. And yeah, so that, that essentially gives you an idea on what these card counters mean, how you can count cards, how many cards are left in your deck, when you kind of get that reset. But when Axes die, the deck counter gets a little wonky. So just keep that in mind. Just some, uh, just some things to keep in mind. And that essentially, and also when the game ends, this will also show up as zero if you win. And if you lose, generally speaking, your cards will disappear. So that's also a kind of small way to see if you won a game or not. But um, yeah, that's just some things to think about. Just a little bit about card counting. And if you liked this particular segment, then uh, do uh, subscribe to the YouTube and whatnot. And I'll see you on the next segment. Thanks, guys.